next to you. And you will live, and you will move, and you will have our bit. Without you, we are nothing. Thank you, Jehovah, for your continuous faithfulness. You are faithful. That's who you are. Thank you for any mates. Thank you for thus far you have brought us. Thank you for today's program. Heavenly Father, we bless you because, Lord, we trust that you have so much in stock for your people today. We trust that, Father, lives will be transformed. Marriages will be transformed. Homes, Father, Lord, that are at the verge of breaking. Holy Spirit, today you will mend. You will turn things around. We trust you. We depend on you. You have done it before. And greater you will do today in the name of Jesus. We we'll bless you for every participant on this platform today. Father, they will testify. They will give us that feedback that they are grateful that this program took place. Father, mm -hmm. I thank you for your daughter. I bless you for your princess that you have prepared for this session. Jehovah, I ask, oh God, that you breathe on her. Father, breathe on her afresh. Breathe on her afresh, oh God. Thank you for every word that will come out of her mouth today. Thank you for those Holy Spirit-inspired illustrations and examples. That, Father, no matter anyone that has come here with already made up mind, I'm just coming for the sake of coming. I'm not going to change my mind. I say, because, Lord, your breath will rest upon those words. Father, they will not be able to resist it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are not just here to, uh, to entertain anybody. We are here to turn lives around through your help, Holy Spirit. And we depend on you again today. You have done it before, and we trust you will do it again today to the glory of your name. I take authority over every works of darkness. I bind every agent of darkness. Whatever plan the enemy has, even con concerning devices that will be used today, we ask, oh God, Father, that no weapon of the enemy formed against any computer, laptop, iPad, phone today that shall prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, oh God, the internet, oh God, Wi-Fi, Father, Lord, ha, will function normally. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, at everyone that has received a wrong link, we believe by now they have received a, the correct link and they will connect. As Amen. many as you have ordained to be in this program today, Holy Spirit, we thank you as we call them in. We call Amen. them in Holy Spirit. Amen. We call them in Holy Spirit. We Amen. call them in Holy Spirit. Amen. We call Jesus them in Holy Spirit. Amen. And we Amen. say, Jehovah Amen. God, you alone will take all the glory. No Amen. one will share the glory with you. We'll bless Amen. you because we know, Father, marriages will be transformed. Lives Amen. will be transformed. Your Amen. name will be glorified. Thank Amen. you because it is done. To you be all the praise. To you be all the glory, for in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all welcome once again. It's always a reviving session because we are meeting with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the ancient of days, the owner of times, the one that instituted marriage. And probably you're on this platform, you are not married, you are planning to get married. I want to say to you, you are on the right platform because you are going to have a solid foundation. God is going to do new things in your life, even today, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, without much ado, as I always say, we don't have much time in our hands, but the little we have. The Lord will multiply it today and you will never regret that you attend this program. Feel free, please, to ask questions, to make contributions. It's your program, okay? So please feel free. And if you want to do it uh, in an anonymous way, you can inbox KO. You can inbox KO or Bumiawe. You can keep inbox ko or boom away if you have any um questions you want to be tackled or you want to make a contribution and you don't want people to know it's you it, it's not a problem 
please inbox Bumi Awe or KO on the platform or myself. God bless you richly. I trust that the Lord will meet you at the very point of your needs in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm going to bring the guest speaker today on the platform. And um, I'm sure, I am confident that you will want her to come back again. So Mrs. Joyce Da Costa, she's a woman of God. She's a covenant child of God. She's a daughter of Zion, hallelujah. She's a wife, a wife of, I think about 30 years now, this year, I think. 26. 26, okay, 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 1998, sorry. Yeah, 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 I get it, I get it, yes. Thank you. Yeah, 26 solid years. She's a wife, a mother of grown up, a minister of God, an investment banker. <laughs> of 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 high reputo, not ordinary banker. Eh? She's up there to the glory of God, chartered. Eh? She became a Christian in the late seventies, but rededicated her life to Christ in the late eighties. You know, in the late seventies, everybody's still young now, and we all say, "Okay, we know Christ one way or the other." <laughs> but now, knowing Christ for herself, she rededicated her life in the eighties. Serious business. She got filled with the Holy Spirit in the same year, falling in love more and more deeply with the Lord in her walk with him as the years go by. We can testify. We know. We know. We can testify to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Minister Joyce has published six books to the glory of God, faith-based books on topics like prayer, fasting, marriage, and that's why she's on this platform and hope, and also written and edited articles, poems for Christian magazines, newsletters, and literature pieces for use in evangelism. She's a woman of God, I know. She has a deep zeal to challenge people to experience a real fulfilling walk with Jesus in a successful Christian living. There are so many people today, they call themselves Christians, but they don't have any walk, no fulfilling walk with Christ. They don't even have a personal relationship with him. So that's her heartbeat, encouraging people to have that walk with God. Christian living, what it really means to be a Christian, mainly through living by her own example, by the grace of God. And I can testify to that propagating sound doctrinal teaching and writing. Minister Joyce is a master's degree holder. I told you ACCA, PG, Deep Financial Management and ACCA Fellowship Qualifications holder. I told you she's a woman of high repute with a heart to see hope and divine justice fulfilled for everyone. Similarly, according to the will of God. Her husband and herself founded the Hope Alive Trust Charity Organization, registered in the United Kingdom and in Nigeria, which was born out of a deep passion for expressing the practicality of God's love. Through building charity hospital, they have that in Nigeria. Regular medical outreaches have gone out with them, it's a wonderful venture in the name of the Lord. They do vocational uh, outreach support schemes, supporting people to start sewing, computer stuff, uh, making soap, different kinds of things, supporting people back in Nigeria. They hold a monthly prayer uh, vigil, which I participate in at times when I'm free, and it's always a blessing. They have annual prayer and word retreats. That's another powerful session. I am telling you, she's a woman of so many, many parts and God has been using her mightily. Today, I'm telling you, just listen. Listen, you will be blessed. And um, they have a computer cafe support in Nigeria. They run an orphanage support as well in Nigeria. They fund water 
uh, boreholes, found grants, and so many things that the Lord has used them to do and still using them to do. They just came back from Nigeria this um, April doing another of such um, outreaches and programs and sponsoring the less privileged. So also joining them in this course are family members, friends, and the very much wider community of people who believe in the same vision of keeping hope aglow in hearts of people. Her husband and herself are blessed with two wonderful children. One is graduating very soon as a doctor and the other one is in the university, you see? So she's not just coming here to talk. We can see the fruit in her life and they reside in the United Kingdom. We thank God for her and I'm just going to hand over to her now. Please fasten your seat belt. Be ready to take off because the Holy Spirit is here and she's loaded. Over to you, Pastor Mrs. Joyce Dakota Costa. Let's give her a round of applause. A round of applause, a round of applause, a round of applause. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so very much, ma. Um, Reverend Dolayinka, that was so kind of you. Um, <laughs> you know, I love you. I love you very much. <laughs> you too. God. <laughs> Amen. Um, I want to give God all the praise and all the glory for the honor and the privilege of being able to address um, his children on this platform. I never ever take the opportunity to speak into the destinies of um, his children. I never ever take it for granted. I always deem it to be a deep privilege. Um, I want to give him praise for that. I also would like to um, thank very much um, um, Reverend Olayin Kabajimo. And I would like you to please join me to celebrate this incredible, incredible woman of God. I, I really celebrate you today. And you know that um, you are very much loved um, in my heart and my from my family. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you. Ma'am. I would like to thank very much the support network around her and um, around Enimet. I would like to thank you so, so very much. You will never lack help in Jesus' mighty Amen. name. I will not go into mentioning names because we may not live here today. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, I bring greetings like um, Reverend Ola Inka has said from the Hope Alive Trust family. And I bring greetings from my husband and my children. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, um, Reverend has asked me to uh, speak on the place of communication in marriage. And um, when I received that, I, you know, obviously like any, you know, any person will do. Um, I went to, to God and I asked him what exactly he would like to um, minister to his children. And I trust him today that um, the word that will come out will be that which would benefit each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to thank you for the for your word that will go out. It is light and it will bring revelation even to our spirit man in the mighty name of Jesus. And Amen. your word will do us good in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So... Um, like I said, I prayed about this and um, I'll just be sharing exactly what God laid on my heart. I'll be real. I'll, and I believe that I can be myself, especially because of the relationship I have with um, Reverend Ola Inka. So I'll just go on. I'll be myself. Please just accept me the way I am. Um, <laughs> I'm just trusting God. Fire on, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So um, in my mind's eye, um, there's a hierarchy of factors when it comes to marriage. And the, at the top of that hierarchy is the word of God. Um, and then following on from, from the word of God would be these three factors, which over time I studying books, looking at the word of God and being married myself for, for a number of years, um, I would deem to be very important factors of marriage, which, you know, are the next in the hierarchy. And that's finance, sex, and communication. And then after that, 
would come the other factors, which I will not bother to go into. So, um, like I said, one of those three factors is what we are going to consider today. Um, praise the Lord. So, um, I'll be reading initially from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 to 12. Permit me to read from um, the KJV, please. I'm very old-fashioned like that. So, verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So basically, why have I read this scripture? I've read this scripture because I wanted to lay a premise of what I would like to share with us today. Um, in the marriage of a child of God, communication needs to be three-way, not just two-way. It is three-way, in my opinion, and I base my opinion on the word of God. Where we have just, where I have just read, and we have, I believe we have read together, verse 12 tells us that if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. However, a threefold cord cannot quickly be broken. What does that tell us? It is better for us to have a three-way communication, a three-way relationship in our marriage, that is the husband, the wife, and obviously the Lord God Almighty. So I've laid that premise. So I'm, the way I'm going to, you know, uh, approach this is that communication in marriage is three way. So we're going to consider the three people that should be present in com when it comes to communication, when it comes to anything, to be honest, in, in the marriage of a child of God. So. I love the Bible. I love the Bible so very much because it's complete. It has references on anything. Yes, we live in a very modernized age, but I promise you there is nothing that we come across that we experience in this day, in this age, that you cannot find references to it in the word of God. And it's the best communication tool ever. You know, it's God is the great dawn of communication and his first um, a way of communicating with his children is the word of God. And that's the best communication tool. So um, for me, when I look at the Bible, I think of it and I'm thinking, you know, God brought himself so small. He, he, he reduced himself to our level, to this extent that he created a tool to help us to understand his bigness, if I may use that English word. You know, he created the Bible so that we will be able to understand him and he will be able to pass information to us because I, I can't even understand how a God that big that we can't wrap our minds around will, will be able to create a medium and a tool with which we'll be able to understand his ways, his plans, whatever it is he wants us to do and however it is he wants us to relate with him. Now, in the beginning, you know, God created Adam. We know that, you know, he created the world, he created Adam. And then after he created Adam, he sensed that something was not quite there. We all know the story. And the Bible says, and God saw that Adam was alone. And he thought, you know what, um, I'll create Eve for him. Um, I will create somebody for him. It was later we knew it was Eve. I'll create somebody for him so that, you know, he will not be alone. We all know it. However, before Eve arrived on the scene, there was some, some, there was some form of agreement between God and Adam. They had what I will refer to as a memorandum of understanding. You know, this is how our relationship is going to be. This is how things are going to run in the Garden of Eden. And in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17, um, the Bible says, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. The Bible says, and the Lord commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. You can eat any, you know, any, any, any fruit from the tree, from the, from any of the trees in the, in the garden. You can eat freely. 
Verse 17, he gave a clause. He gave a caveat. He said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Okay, this is a very, very simple instruction that God gave Adam. I've given you this whole earth. I've given you this whole garden. There's so many trees in this garden. However, there's just this one. I don't want you to touch it. Uh, sorry, I don't want you to eat of the fruit of it. And I've put it right in the center of the garden so you don't miss it. You know, so it won't, it won't be, oh, I made a mistake. I didn't know it was the tree that um, I wasn't meant to eat of the fruit. So he put it right in the center, right in the middle. You can't miss it. There was no ambiguity about what God said to Adam. And then, so, so I would say the communication was very clear. And it reminds me of when we give instructions to toddlers. You know, um, you say, that is fire. Don't touch. Hot. Jojo is going to burn your finger. But hey, what do they do? They still go there because he's burning very bright. And, they, you know, if you are not careful, maybe you've, you've turned your face to one side uh, for a few seconds. They go putting their hands in that fire and they go, ah, but I told you not to touch it. You know, it just it, that that picture just flashed across my mind as I was preparing this. And then, OK, we move on to scene two. Eve came on the on the scene. Ta -da! You know, um, Adam came, you know, Adam just woke up and there was this beautiful gift looking at him. And he was like, oh, my gosh, wow, this is the bone of my bone. And this is the flesh of my flesh. You know, this is the best thing that ever happened to me since the advent of the air fryer. Um, Yeah. I love air fryers. I just thought I, sh I, you know, I should put that there. I love anything that makes my life easy in the kitchen. Uh, let's just, uh, you know, pack that. <laughs> so, okay. But, you know, after all of that, they were frolicking in the garden. They enjoyed themselves, you know, I would imagine. But here comes man's arch enemy number one. And in Genesis chapter three, verse one, the Bible says, now, so story began to change. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Okay, please, did God say that? Okay, how will God say you cannot eat of every tree of the garden? Number one, at this point in time, the human race was vegetarian. They were not eating animals. So if God planted the garden and put Adam and Eve in the garden and said, you know, and said, you need to leave, you know, and all of that, how are they going to survive if God said that they should not eat of every tree of the garden? This statement in itself is stupid. It doesn't make sense. And you know, hence during communication, we need to be very intentional, very attentive, and we should allow common sense to ring. At this point in time, to be honest, alarm bells should have been ringing. The devil twisted what God said. In marriages, we need to be very careful. We should, you know, we should understand exactly what God said concerning our lives as, as individuals, concerning our spouses, and concerning our marriages, concerning our homes and our families. We have to be sure of what God said. And we should make sure that we do not allow whatever it is that is going on in our society, outside there, you know, to change the narrative, to change the paradigm of the word of God. The word of God remains sure. It Nothing can change it. Whether we have modernized things or things have gone woke, whatever it is, the word they want to be using out there, I do not care. The word of God remains the word of God. It's a three-way communication. If we know we want our marriages to work, we have a must of a must make sure that what God has communicated to us in his word is what we are basing our lives on in our homes. Now, what God said was very simple, like I said, and the enemy twisted it for, for Eve. And that he's never changed. That's what he will keep trying to do. And we should make sure that by the grace of Almighty God, he does not twist the word of God in our lives and in our homes in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, I will, I will go, I'll go into examples, don't worry. So 
So, you know, I've said, let God be, let his word be the standard of everything we will decide, we will communicate about in our marriage. Let his word be our standard concerning your spouse, concerning your finances, concerning communication and anger, concerning uh, his thoughts on sex. Let it be what we would decide that we are going to do, regardless of our feelings and what we think about it. What did the Bible say concerning our children and bringing them up? Let that be the basis of our communication. Let that be the basis of our agreement. Don't, uh, don't let us let, you know, allow modernism into our homes to dictate the tone of our homes. I'll give an example. You know, um, many, many years ago, and that was 20 something years, yeah, 20 something, yeah, 20 something years ago. You know, um, lo and behold, I was doing my, my driving test and I, you know, I did my, I, I passed on the fourth time. Yeah, number four. That was when I passed my driving test. Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah. So, so, you know, the first time, I know I failed the first time because I was so nervous and anxiety took over and I saw this, uh, um, uh, you know, I won't, I won't go into the details because we have, we don't have too much time. So anyway, the first one, yeah, I failed. But the two times after that, two, the two tests I took after that, I did not fail, you know, and I won't go into, you know, details of, of why I know that I did not fail. However, they said I failed, you know. And at the, at the third time, to be honest, I, I, I was fed up and I, and I gave up. And when I got home, I said to my husband, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing this test again. I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of it. Because especially that at this time, it was remaining like um, two weeks for my, what's it called? Um, theory to elapse. Theory test. Yes. So it was remaining two weeks for my theory test to elapse. And I was just tired. I, I, you know, I, I just couldn't be bothered anymore. And then my husband said, please take your driving test. I said, I'm not taking it. I'm not taking it. I'm tired. So anyway, I went to God in prayers. I'm this sort of person. I love to ask when things are not quite going the way it should. I ask God a lot of questions. I don't, don't get me wrong. I don't ask with impunity. I don't ask why me or, you know, I just, I ask because I would like to understand what I'm doing wrong and what I need to do to correct it. Or, you know, what needs to be done? Am I getting something wrong? And I asked God, I said, what's going on? Because it was no longer, it didn't make any sense to me anymore. And I asked God, God, so what, what's going on here? I don't understand. And then he said, he said to me very quietly, you are not submitting to your husband. Uh -uh. And I said, <laughs> it threw me. So I said, there are two things here, God. Number one, what has submitting to husband got to do with driving test? That was number one. Then number two, I said, so God is now remaining for him to be walking all over my head because I don't know what else you want me to do. I'm doing everything that I know I'm supposed to do as a wife. I've, I've submitted to him. I'm cooking for him. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know, what else do you want me to do? Out of frustration and I must tell you anger. And obviously God just kept quiet. He didn't answer me even. So when I think back about it, I'm thinking, God, you are so merciful. You are such a merciful, merciful God. Because I'm just thinking, if he just slapped me closer, that will be the end of me. You see the way I just talked to him. You know, he just kept quiet. He didn't answer me. So in the end, you know, I just said, okay, God, I'm really, really sorry. That was that was very silly of me. You know, I shouldn't have talked like that. I said, okay, what is it exactly that I'm not doing? Because in my mind's eye, I'm actually submitting to him. And he said to me, you are submitting in actions. You are not submitting in your heart. And immediately he said it. I knew it. I knew that was it. Because in my mind's eye, I was like, you know, and, and I'm being honest here. I was like, he's a graduate. I'm a graduate. Can I beg? I, but I would do all those actions of a good wife. I cook for him. I will do everything I'm supposed to do in the house, you know, and everything. But inside my heart, it's like, I beg, I beg, I beg, leave me. And that day, I made up my mind. And I, I repented. I said, God, I'm sorry. Um, the way you want me to do is very, what you're asking me to do is very hard. I told him, it's very, very hard. Submission is not easy. But by the time you follow God's word and you do it, I promise you, it's the easiest thing ever. I'm, I'm, and I'm saying it to you from from practice. So anyway, I'll I'll just go on. So 
And one, why, why did I go into that? I went into that because I'm trying to say, we need to obey the word of God, regardless of how it looks, regardless of it doesn't make sense. I've, I've tasted of the word of God. I've tasted it over and over and over again. His word works and it works like magic, like wonders. So I'll move on. What was Eve's response? Genesis chapter two, sorry, chapter three, verse two to three. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Is that what God said really? No, that's not what God said. Umba. You know, we should be very careful about what God said. God said this and God said that. You know, because many people use it to manipulate other people. Uh, God said to me. And you know, once, once you say God said to me, it's very difficult to argue against God said to me. So we should be very careful when we are saying God said. And what was the counter response of the devil to Eve? Here comes the irony that I would like us, you know, that I would like to state, which I believe most of us, if not all of us know. The devil knows the Bible. He knows it very, very well. He knew what God said to Adam. He knew God did not tell Adam not to eat of every tree of the garden. If not, how else would they have survived in the garden if they are not eating of every tree of the garden? He knew exactly what God said. And I, but what was he doing? He was trying to find a loophole. The enemy was trying to find a loophole in the communication of Adam and Eve. And I pray today in the mighty name of Jesus that the enemy will never find a loophole in your home and in your family. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, he will not find that break in the hedge. In the mighty name of Jesus, where he stands as the accuser of the brethren, he will not be able to find a foothold in Jesus' name. The Amen. Lord will protect your family with Amen. fire in the name of Jesus. The Amen. enemy will Amen. never be able to comment in, in the Jesus. Name of Jesus. Amen. 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 That's four to five of the same chapter. Now, it was the it was Satan's turn to respond. And he said, oh, uh, the, and the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Hello. <laughs> and God, uh, for, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Everything he has said is a load of tosh. They were all lies. Why? Number one, they did die. Two, they were already gods. He didn't, they didn't have to want to try to be God. They were already gods. God created us as, as God, as gods on the face of the earth. How? I won't be able to go into the details. He 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 told Adam, have dominion. Who has dominion over, over a kingdom? The kingdom God gave, gave Adam was the earth. That he was king over the earth. He was a god over. He said, have dominion over the earth. He God gave him a will. It is only gods that have wills. And the Bible says that he has made us God. He has called us gods. Even Jesus repeated it. So this one that the devil was dangling carrot in the eyes of, of, of in the eyes of, of Eve, and you know, at that time, it was it was a lot of tosh. They already had it. And you know, they knew good. He said, Oh, they will know good and evil. They already knew good. What else did they want to know? And for them not to know evil, God knew why he didn't want them to know evil. He was protecting them. But hello, they didn't want God's protection. Hindsight is a good thing. We are all looking at what Adam and Eve did in hindsight. I'm not saying I'm going to be better than Eve if I had been there. But it's a good thing that we're able to study what they did and, you know, learn from it. So what communication errors did Eve make? Error number one. Mama Eve, why were you having a discussion with the devil? You never, ever have discussion. There is no place for discussion with the devil. You don't have a one-to-one. -one. You, When he comes with his suggestion, you just reply with the word of God and shut him up and tell him to get out. And that's it. You don't have discussion with him. Error number two. The there must have been some form of miscommunication between Eve and Adam. Because when God gave Adam the instruction, Eve was not there. However, when Eve came, I'm thinking, and it's not mentioned in the Bible, I'm thinking Adam must have passed that information to Eve. Now, God did not say, do not touch the tree. That's where the trouble came. She added to the word of God. 
do not touch because there was there's no do not touch in what god said god just said do not eat of the tree of god obviously if you want to eat it you have to touch it but i'm going somewhere now what what i'm thinking happened is is you know maybe when she now touched it and she saw ah nothing happened jebby jebby they said if we touch this thing that we are going to die ah i'm still here now you know and then she went ahead and grabbed the tree uh, the, the fruit and ate it you know so when we add to the word of god is trouble when we remove from it is trouble let's just leave the word the way it is interpret it the way it is use it in our homes in our communication the way it is don't embellish the word don't try to use the word to manipulate your spouse it only ends in katakata and wahala and that will never be a portion in jesus name Amen. error number three that in uh, error communication error number three that i believe eve made now there's this sunday school story that they tell us that uh, um, when when the devil came and uh, um, um, Adam went on a journey and he <laughs> went to hunt and then it's when <laughs> it's when he came back that uh, Eve served him on the plates the the apple that she got from from the tree is a bunch of touch. When you read the Bible, the Bible says that and uh, she gave of the, of the fruit to her husband Adam. who Adam. was with her. Hmm. So he was standing right there. Now Mama Eve. When the devil was talking to you and you saw that uh, what he's saying is different from what you knew, what you thought to be the case, all you needed to have done I was to come to your husband exactly. and ask him, uh, Oga, she, this thing is what you told me. What's, what is um, Mr. Lagbaja here telling me? But she never did. She never communicated with her husband. She didn't ask him questions. And this is where we need to be careful as wives as well. You know, we shouldn't think, oh, I'm all that and a bag of chips. He's a, he's a graduate. I'm a graduate. I can make up my mind. I can make my decisions by myself. No, there should not be that in our homes. We must talk together. We must agree things together. We must communicate together. You don't understand something, ask your spouse, you know. And that was the error that Mama Eve made. I believe if she had asked Adam, maybe the story would have not been what we have today. Error number four. If you are not sure... Make sure you ask. If you are not sure of an information that you have, make sure you make sure you ask. Do not assume you are not a mind reader. Don't read your husband's mind. Don't read your wife's mind. Don't attempt to. We are not gods. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'll I'll move very quickly. Time is far spent. Now the fall happened. I won't go into all of that. The Bible says that Eve ate of the tree, uh, of the fruit of the tree. And here we are. Now we move to our dear Papa Adam, the third person in the trial communication ring. Okay, Papa Adam, what were you doing keeping quiet beside your wife when the devil was talking to her? You kept quiet. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 to 14, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 to 14, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Now, Eve was deceived. Adam was not. Adam knew exactly what God said. He was tempted. He fell into temptation. Adam, it, this is, this is the, uh, the bit of the communication that I'm trying to explain to us. You know, Eve had miscommunication. Adam did not have miscommunication. It ha Eve had mi miscommunication, and that is why she was deceived. Where communication is incomplete, is partial, and there's loophole, the problem the, that brings along um, an easy target for Satan's deceit. However, Papa Adam knew exactly what God said, and hence to him, for him, what happened to him was a fall. He was tempted. Praise the Lord. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, um, amen. So Adam knew exactly what he was doing. He could have stopped his wife, but he didn't. He chose not to stop his wife. He chose not to. And that is why, you know, when it comes to temptation, when it comes to, 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 to being lured, the, 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 the husband knew exactly that adultery is a sin. Before he began to text this babe, how are you? How are you doing? Are you okay for a catch-up? 
He knew that adultery was a sin. And the married woman knew that adultery is a sin. When she replied the text to her former boyfriend, she knew. You don't just hop into bed with someone. There is a process to it. We know. Error number one for Papa Adam. All he needed to do was talk to Eve. Don't eat it. God did not say we should not touch it. Maybe I just said that to you so that you'll be scared that you move near the tree. But God, God said we should not eat it. Don't eat. That's all he should have said to Eve. Maybe that would have stopped Eve from eating. And he should have turned to the devil and tell him where to go. Repeated exactly what God said and tell him where to go. Get behind me, Satan. That was what the, the you know, that, that's what God has taught us that we should do. Thank God for the second Adam. Hallelujah for the second Adam. Yes. He came and he did, he had a much better communication. When the enemy came, with the three temptation. You see, there is one thing about, there is a way we can identify the hand of the devil in anything. And that is repeated evil cycles and patterns. Devil doesn't change his, his, his um, tactics. The same tactic he used in the Garden of Eden, the same tactic he, it is, it was that he tried to use on Jesus. The same thing with regards to breaking and looking for that loophole in communication with, you know, with Jesus. And when he came, because he, he, he tempted, he tempted um, and, and made Adam and Eve fall in three areas. And it was the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The same three temptations he used against Jesus. But hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The second Adam won. Amen. Hello. That is why we are here. The second Adam did not fall to that trick. There was no loophole. There was no communication loophole. Yeah. Jesus, who is the word himself, knew exactly what the word is. And he quoted it back to him. And he said, yeah. get me behind me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And Satan will get behind us in our yeah. home marriages in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. We Amen. stand on the word of God. The word of God Amen. will fail against him in our families in the mighty name of Jesus. He will not Amen. get hold of our marriages. He Amen. will not get hold of our families Amen. in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. First Hallelujah. Corinthians chapter 15 verse 22 for as in all Ad for as in Adam all die even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Hallelujah. Amen. I will conclude um, with tips from my book, um, Reverend Olanyika had spoken about, you know, the number of books, the, the books that I've written. Um, and I will just conclude very briefly with tips from them, from there. However, I would um, play something very quickly, which is just about two minutes, um, an audio from, from that book, which is Couples Notes. I hope um, we will be able to to hear it. And Ganzi and Amal were getting ready we to, get to work. Yes, yes. Through their individual morning routines as usual. Can you help us pick up a few grocery items from the shops on your way back home this evening, please? I think I'll be late coming back home. I've got one of those meetings, Amal said. Hmm, muttered Lubanzi, trying hard to fix the cufflinks on his shirt sleeve. Thank you, hun. I'll text the list to you. Amal continued, giving her husband a quick smooch on his cheek, and darted out of the door. Amal walked in later that evening. Lubanzi was watching his favorite show on telly. Hey darling, Lubanzi said brightly. Hey you, returned Amal, hugging and kissing each other. Were you able to help with the list I sent to you? Amal asked. Oh yeah, the bag is on your dresser replied Lubanzi, with a smile. My dresser, she queried, wrinkling her brows. Hmm, he responded. Amal then walked slowly to their bedroom, confusion clearly written on her face. A few moments later, she came back out to the living room with a cosmetics paper bag in her hands and a wry smile. How much did you spend on these? she asked. Lubanzi looked away from the TV to his wife, are that, a tidy sum, he replied. What did you need all of that for anyway? I asked for groceries, not talcum powder, his wife replied, rolling her eyes. It was Lubanz's turn to look confused. I bought what you had on the list you sent to me. <laughs> I must have sent my cosmetics list to you in error. Well, I wonder whose fault that was then, Lubanzi said, lifting his shoulders in a slight shrug. If you were listening this morning, you would have realized I sent the wrong list to you, his wife maintained. 
Women, you never can win, Lubanzi muffled under his breath, turning back to the TV. I heard that. Amal retorted back. Thank you for listening. Uh, I won't go into that. We may use it later on um, in questions and um, references when the discussion is, is opened up. So, okay, so that was an audio snippet from, from my book, um, Couples Notes. And that was from, uh, you know, the communication section in that book. So basically, rounding up, I would say it's very easy for miscommunication to happen. In, in order for, to avoid this, we have to be very intentional in communicating with our spouses. Number one, know your spouse his personality, her personality, her likes, her dislikes. Um, you, I, I had to try, I had to be intentional about understanding my husband's personality. It was when I understood this that a lot of things made sense about him. And I'm sure the same thing went with him, you know. Um, I, I understood why he spoke the way he spoke, you know, why he communicates the way he communicates. You need to know what your husband or your, your wife's personality is. Very important because that drives the form of communication, the way they communicate, it drives it, is very key. Spend quality time together. In, in spending quality time with, with each other, you will be able to understand them better. Each person is unique. God has told us we are fearfully, we are wonderfully made. No two people are the same. So you, you, you can't compare your husband, you can't compare your wife to somebody else's wife or husband. Your wife is your wife, your husband is your husband. You need to know who that person is so that you don't wake up 20 years down the line and you are wondering who this person is. And we also change along the line. We don't remain the same. You want to follow your spouse as they change in life. You know, my husband is my best friend. I, I promise you. I, 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 apart from, you know, first is God. You, God is number one in my life. But my husband is my best friend. I enjoy being with him. I enjoy spending time with him. Yeah, I may not even talk. Just that I'm sitting close to him. It's okay for me. And yeah, you may call me um um Ruku, 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 Ruku. <laughs> I'm, <fine. laughs> I'm okay with it. And the same thing goes with him, you know. I, and I'm not lying. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, honor and accept gender differences. There are gender differences when it comes to communication. The way your husband will communicate with you is not the way you communicate with your husband. So because we we women, we know how to communicate one kind, one kind. Men do not, they don't understand. Let's bring it down to their level. Like I said earlier, we, are, we you know, let's be specific. Let's not say, eh, but he should know or she should know. You know, the, eh, I'm this sort of person. If you don't tell me, I don't know. You know, so you now think, oh, but she should know. You will stay there for a long time because I will not know. And me, and it's not that I'm being being uh, wicked or I'm being mean. I just don't know, you know. Um, praise the Lord. Very quickly, uh, be specific when you're communicating. Avoid mind reading and make sure that you are a listener. Don't listen so that you want to win the argument. Listen because you want to hear and understand what your spouse is actually telling you. Um be free to express positive feelings. Don't be stingy with, with, your, with your compliments. You, oh, you look so fine today. Oh my gosh, Bobo man, you are the best man walking on the face of the earth. I mean it. If you are faking it, they will know. Mean it. Express negative feelings constructively. This is the final one. Expl express it cons uh, constructively. When you have an emotion that's causing negative feelings, identify what that emotion is and control it. When you control it, then you express it in the healthiest way possible and then choose the right time to express it. For instance, there are things I will not begin that discussion when my husband is hungry. It's not when he's hungry that I begin to talk about certain things. I make sure that he is he's, he's finished eating. His eyes is calm. He's, he has calmed down. And then I know when to talk certain things with him. I pray that God will help us um, with regards to communication in, in our marriages and even with our children in the home. You know, basically, God God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I rest um, my case here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Over to um, you, Reverend Ola Inka. Thank you so much. Let's give our speaker a round of applause. Show it via chat. And let's see you clapping. Clap, 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 clap. Wow, 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 wow. You have put in so much within this half hour. Wow. Well done, Ma. I have been blessed. And I am sure loads of people as well have been blessed. Let's see 
your comments on the chat, please. Let's see your comments on the chat. Well done so much, Ma. I have about five questions that were sent to me. And um, I, I've been checking the, um, the chats, but I haven't seen any. Uh, I'm not sure if our uh, admin uh, group have uh, received any. Please, if you do, let us know so that uh, we can read it out and uh, our speaker can talk about it. And everyone on the platform, like I said um, at the beginning, that um, you are free to make contributions and um, also ask questions as well. So please, but before we start, I just want to quickly remind us about the um, the rules of this um, um, house. We just need to know that uh, this is a Christian organization, like I always say, and that our values and principles are based on what the scripture says. We don't um, encourage uh, abuse on this platform. We don't run down any organization or anybody on this platform. We respect everybody on this platform. So please let's have that at the back of our mind when we begin to make contributions. We don't do things around confrontations or just arguing unnecessarily, please. Let's honor the Holy Spirit and let's do things orderly. God bless you richly. Mm -hmm. So if um, Sister K or, or uh, Minister Bumi, if you have any questions from anyone, please let us know. Um, because of our time, I'm just going to start with the ones that were sent to me. Um, the first one says, how is how important is sex when we talk about communication? How important is sex when we talk about communication? Our speaker will talk, but if you have anything you want to say regarding this, um, the person said that in my own marriage, we're having a lot of issues um, around sex and um, it's affecting the way we relate together. So can you help? Maybe somebody on this platform will also is also experiencing the same. How important is sex and how can we help in my marriage? Maybe she wants to say, how can you help in my marriage? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Ma. Um, um, thank you very much for asking that question is very bold of you to actually ask that question because in Christendom, we keep quiet about a lot of things and um, we we tend not to want to have these awkward conversations and awkward dis discussions, but they are actually the very nitty gritty part of, of our, of the fiber of, of our society and our families. Okay, so I'll go straight to the point. Now, like I mentioned earlier, sex is a very important part of marriage. And how does communication affect this. You see, um, you need to be able to talk to each other about sex and be very, don't say exactly what you mean. Say exactly what you feel about sex. Now, um, generally, females uh, females tend not to want sex generally. I'm, I'm just, it's not always the case. Females tend not to want sex as much as, you know, women tend not to want, want sex as much as men usually. However, there's always a middle point, you know. Um, when it comes to, to having sex, you should be able to talk to each other and say, I'm tired. And sometimes when you, when you are not, when you are tired, sometimes you may have to, you know, just because for a man, sex is important to him. To help him, you may just have sex with him. Now, you may think, you may say, ah, but um, um, why should I suffer myself just because of him? Uh, can't he hold himself? You don't want to push him outside. At the same time, you are not responsible for him when it comes to his... Um, you know, when it comes to him taking responsibility for his sexual life. However, you are a very big help 
when it comes to it. So sit down and talk together. How many times do you want to be having sex in a week? Talk. How many times do you want to be having sex, my husband? You know this, you know I'm you know I'm usually tired. By the time I go to work and come back and cook food, I am tired. Okay. Che, you will help, you will help in this area in the house so that I won't be too tired when I get to bed. And you know what? If you don't begin to prime me before bedtime, and then I get to bed and you want sex, it's not going to happen. No. But if you send me love messages, you better send me love messages doing <laughs> So that when I'm seeing your text, my body will be doing one kind, one kind before I get home. So that <laughs> you don't so By the time you get home and, we are, and you are uh, talking to <sighs> bed, I'm not going to be saying, please, I have a headache. <laughs> you need to get down with it. Say it. And then when it comes to the actual sex, you know, the sex itself, what, how, what do you like? You should be able to talk, talk to each other about how you like it. You know, as far as it's not sinful, because there are some things that, you, as a Christian, I believe you shouldn't begin to go into. However, how do you like it? What part of your body do you want him to touch? What part of your body do you want her to touch to each other? Shaping your husband and wife. The Bible says, and they were naked before each other, and they were not ashamed. There is no shame in it. It is you and your husband. It is you and your wife. Touch me here. It makes me feel good. Don't touch me. I don't like it. You know, it's communication. Talk. You, I don't know. Why are we hiding? Shabby, it's your husband. <laughs> so, well, I hope I have answered that person's question. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love that. I love that. I love that. Well done, ma. Thank Guys you. on the platform, I hope you have heard Pastor Mrs. Talk. Man, you're on the platform. Prime your wife before the time. Don't just go there and then she will just lie down like a log of wood. We are talking about communication. Um, there's a man there that I've written something on the thing. He said, don't you think that what went wrong was Eve taking on the discussion at first? By this, I mean that wives should, should not engage in essential discussions concerning the family without getting the husband involved. Mm, yeah, that, that, that's a good one. We'll, we'll come to that. I think we need to talk about that. But um. The person who asked this question about sex, uh, importance of sex in um, communicating in marriage, I hope um, the answers that's been given, I hope uh, it has met your um, your query. Um, may, may, maybe I, um, like um, uh, Pastor Mrs. have said, don't let us um, spiritualize sex in marriage. It's part of the communication, the important communication that has to be made in marriage. Please, like she has said, what part of your body should be taught? It's still part of communication. What part of your body you don't want to be taught? Is it sinful? No. The aspect that is sinful, put it aside. Maybe. But when God says, and both of them were naked, that was innocency. And that was being free with each other. They were not ashamed. That's what the Bible says. So I don't see the reason why um, sex should be an issue at all in marriage. Seriously. I don't see. It shouldn't be an issue at all. It's like the food of marriage. Seriously. If you deprive each other of sex, you are starving yourself. Your marriage is going to be in big, big mess. Big trouble. So like uh, Pastor Mrs. have said, please, let's take that on board. Maybe you are still doing just one, um, what do we call it now? What do we call it now? Um, eh, um, what's the word now? The normal, normal style all the time. Yeah. Jerusalem. <laughs> that's another one I've learned today. Jerusalem, thank you. Yeah, maybe that's the only one you are doing. There's no foreplay. There's nothing. Ah, move up. Grow up is more than that. You have not had sex in I can't count how many decades now. It doesn't mean anything to me because me, I'm married to Baba God. That would not be a problem. Amen. I can talk about it and, and I, can, I can encourage you in so many ways because I know it is the food of marriage. Okay, so thank you for that. Shall we quickly go to what um, Pastor Sonny said there? If okay. I go to the next question. Um, can, can I quickly say something, man? Oh, yes, ma'am. 
Thank you. Just a quick one. I, I thank you so much, my pastor, for what you've said. But I think if I'm looking at the question, I'm looking at the angle of communication. Maybe the woman wants it and the man is so spiritual that the man is not the one giving her what she wanted. It's not that she's the man wanted it. Sometimes we spiritualize it in Christendom because we think it's for sinner. And if one spouse wants it more, the other spouse will be thinking that, are you still in the Lord? Why do you need this carnality? And mommy, you talked about, we should ask, the Bible says a body is your body, his body is a body, right? So if you are finding it difficult to discuss it, maybe because of your background or you find it too big deal, if you can't speak openly like pastors, they go for counseling. Maybe they will help you to break it. We have some counselors in the church. We have some groups that will help you to make it fun. Because like you said, Ma, it's one of the pillar of marriage. That is the only thing that can sustain. If you are not saying it, you are, they are doing it outside. And both of you, you see them doing it outside. Even the, the TV we are watching, the programs, the, the children, they are, everybody is exposed to all those things now. But you want to enjoy your home, go extra mile. You know, don't spiritualize it. Seek help. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Thank you for that contribution. Yeah. Um, Motsi, Motsi C. Uh, good evening, Ma. This is Millie. Oh, okay, this is Millie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good evening. I just wanted to contribute. And my contribution, I think of myself as a young person, <laughs> In you know, is that Sometimes for people, sex can be used as leverage, particularly from us women. You know, uh, we would say, I asked you to help me fold the ironing and you didn't fold the ironing. So when you come to bed, it's almost like now you want to touch me. Yes. But, you know, it's almost like we're using it. If you want, if you want me after hours, you need to do what I ask for before hours, <laughs> you know, and this is quite prevalent in a lot of particularly young people, because it's almost like if you didn't do what I wanted you to do, you're not going to get what you need to get. So we need to put that separation there. And I often say to people who are younger than me that I mentor that those two things are very separate from each other. You can't say because we had an argument, you know, I always say the scripture even says, don't don't let, you know, the sun go down on your anger. Likewise, don't go to bed and bring whatever it is that happened in the day into your marital bed. You know, that's one one area that people really need to iron out that when we get to bed, it's almost like we've been given a new lease of life. We're having a, a fresh opportunity to explore again and just bury the hatchet and start again on a fresh a fresh slate. That's one area. So my second contribution would be a lot of men are visual, whilst a lot of women uh, thrive on words. You know, so all it takes for most women is for me to come out of the shower and jump into my bed with nothing on, and I know that I've already triggered what I need to trigger. That's how men just view things. They're visual. If I if I want anything to happen, I would know what to wear to bed or what not to wear to bed, and it will happen. Whereas women, I thrive, not just me, but most women thrive on the words that they hear from you. So it's quite important that Instead of just waiting, you know, I often say to my husband that there's a rule that when you come through the door, find me wherever I am in the house and just ask me, how was your day? You know, if I'm on the phone to somebody and I can't come off the phone, just squeeze my hand as you walk past, you know, just acknowledge my presence so that I know that we're in this together. But you can't spend the whole day without saying a word to me. And then as soon as I come into bed at 11, straight away you expect magic to happen. It wouldn't work. So that communication line really needs to stay very open and things separated between this is our intimate time and this is what happened in the day. It has nothing to do with our intimacy. You're thank muted, you, thank, you, thank you. Thank you so much. So young people who are on the platform, whether you are newly married or you are just getting into marriage, all those things that you have said, I hope you are taking it on board, especially men, men, men. I know, yes, women too, we need to, but most of the time, from all that we have been hearing now, 
young people that are just starting this journey, maybe you're just two years old, you're five years old, you're even 10 years old in marriage. Please, let's take on board all these things I've been hearing. And for those who have been there for donkey years, and we are not doing some of these things that you have had today. Ah, all those things that the woman of God talked about and then the uh, contributions we've had now. Please, let's take them on board. Allow the Holy Spirit to break you. Don't say, I can't change. That is me. That is, you, you, you are looking for trouble. You are opening the door for, for the devil to come in and act actually twist the things that God have not said. We've learned from Genesis um, chapter two, chapter three now from our, our uh, past promises, right? We are, be, be ready to be flexible. Be ready to change, please. And the Holy Spirit will help us in Jesus' name. The, a lot of people have Amen. said things on the platform. Uh, they've said um, sex in marriage is effective when the emotions of both of them are stable. No unforgiveness or any negative emotions. And like Sister Millie said as well, like um, Sister uh, Temi also said, sort out things, sort out things. Don't allow the sun, you know, to go down. Or else, if, if you're not, if your emotions are not stable and you want to have sex, you, you can't communicate. If you can't communicate, how then do you want your soul to rub together? Yeah, when we talk about sex, it's your, your, your soul and your spirit, uh, they, they, they must be together for you to really enjoy or, or else you're abusing each other. Yeah, you're just abusing each other. There's nothing to it. Okay, thank you, um, Mommy Ulufun Shaw, for that. Um, yes, yeah, somebody says sex is spontaneous, spontaneous energy that should, yes, yeah, Sister, Sister Millie, spontaneous energy that should come easy when everything is in place. So, still talking about emotions. Yes, talking about everything must be in place. Um, then, Somebody said, Roxana, Sister Roxana, long time. How are you? I believe that is also important. If you are not in the mood, you should decide on another time together. And um, for example, please, can we leave it for tomorrow? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, but uh, that should not be all the time. Like somebody said, you are tired. Today you are tired. Tomorrow you are tired. That's a big problem as well. You shouldn't be, please. Like we should always decide, okay, twice a week, we must have sex. Thrice a week, we must. Some people want it every day. If it's uh, possible, <laughs> but if it is not possible, you need to reach a compromise. You really need to reach a compromise. Yeah, it should not be one-sided. Um, then somebody said, okay, that's a discussion I want us to have. Uh, Pastor Mrs., can you address this? Don't you think that what went wrong was Eve, remember you said Adam was just standing there and he said nothing. And this person is kind of commenting on that. He said, don't you think that what went wrong was Eve taking a, on the discussion at first? Then by this, I mean that wives should not engage in essential discussion concerning the family without getting the husband involved, even though, Adam was standing there. He said nothing. He's saying that, yes, the husband was there. Why did she not uh, communicate with her husband? Do you want to say something about that? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So, so um, at the beginning of um, the, the program or the discussion, um, I mentioned that, let's go back to the word. I always like going back to the word because that way, you know, we'll not get it wrong. So Genesis chapter three, verse one, the Bible says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman. So basically, I believe, I think, let me, let me choose my words very carefully. I think he recognized a soft area in which he could come in. And that's why he directed his communication to Eve because the Bible says, and he said unto the woman, he didn't talk, he saw um, Adam standing there. He didn't see anything, but he said unto the woman, such and such and such. Now, you, while when I was um, taking it, I don't know, sir, whether you had joined the platform by then or not. One of the errors that we identified with Eve's communication um, style or whatever we may want to term it was that she did not turn to her husband to say, Mbo, my husband, 
what did God say? Because this is what I believe God said. And this is what this um, serpent is telling me now is different. Her husband was right there by her side. It was one of the errors that we identified earlier. Mama Eve should have just turned to her side and talked with her husband and say, um, my husband, please, can you clarify things? Because you were the one who received that instruction from God. And this is what I think that you told me. Now it's, been, it's different from what this guy is telling me here. And when it comes to communication, it's two way. It, it, well, it's two way, you know, between two people. However, we identified at the beginning that it's a three way, it's a three way thing when it comes to the marriage of a child of God. And on the other hand, Adam too should have interjected in the discussion that was going on. So the two of them carry blame. It's not this person should not, it's not that wives should not be part of a communication of what would affect the family and it should, well, okay, don't let me misquote um, our pastor. He said, without carrying the husband along. And that is very true. No one, and neither should the husband also, you know, make a decision solely without letting the wife know. Yes, the final decision lies with him. Don't, don't get me wrong. However, things should not be dropped on each other in the family. There should be things that both of you have discussed. This is all part of communication. Both of you have discussed it. You have talked about it. And you, and then, you know, you decided this is how it's going to be. And where submission comes in is where the husband believes that this thing is right. And then the wife may, at that point in time, not think that it is, that's the way they should go. But submission means you let the, you let what the, uh, your husband has decided should be the way you should go. Let it go through and you pray for him. You know, praise the Lord. But there's no one, oh, this one should not be talking or that one should not be talking. You know, it, both of you should be talking together. Praise the Lord. I hope I've answered our yeah. friend did well to that question. Thank you. Yes, yes. So we should carry each other along. We should communicate together and then decision is made. Not one person dropping one thing or the other and say, this is how it has to be. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Somebody also said that the last thing about sex before we move on, he says sex initiation shouldn't be for men alone. Women too should. Yes, very, very true. So it's not just the man that will say, oh, come. No, the woman too should initiate it. Somebody said earlier, I can come out of the bathroom and I can just lie down there. So I'm telling my husband something. Yes, well done. So um, next one, it says personality issues. How do we deal with personality issues? My husband is the type that he doesn't care what he says, where he says, and how he says it. He can talk me down uh, in the presence of anybody. And he doesn't see it as wrong. And this has been causing me a lot of heartache. I have tried many times. There is no respect. To cut it short, there is no respect. How can I handle this? And when somebody talks to you this way, I don't feel, I, I don't feel comfortable even sitting down to talk with them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, my dear sister, I pray in the name of Jesus that God will bring a solution to the issue at hand Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. As okay. um, Reverend was um, reading that question, the passage that came to my heart is a passage that we most likely all know, and that's First Corinthians chapter 13, and is speaking about love. Regardless of our um, personality types, yes, there are some personality types that are very outgoing, you know, they are very, they, they are very outspoken. They say exactly what is on their mind without sugarcoating it. Um, they don't put a filter on what they say. And wherever the thought comes into their minds, they just say it and out, out of the door it goes, you know. However, there is a filter that a child of God puts through, they put through their communication. And that filter is called love. Regardless of our personality types, the Bible says, 
that love does not behave itself unseemly. It does not seek its own. It's not easily provoked. It thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity. It rejoices in the truth. It bears all things. It believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. You know, um, there's another part that I would like to, um, to read. Love suffers long. Love is kind. So regardless, and that's in verse four. That was what I was looking for, actually. Love is kind, regardless of our personality type. Kindness supersedes. Yes, um, I, I may be a very exuberant type. I, my personality may be very exuberant. I talk, you know. But however, love will filter how, I, how exuberant I am with regards to communicating to my spouse. So um, what I would like to advise our sister is to um i don't know what since i don't know whether it's possible for you to actually you you would need to have a sit down discussion first with your husband because that's what i would usually advise with marriage she first said she's all, done that she said uh, while i was reading that that she's done that several times done it several times mm -hmm. has she done it from the point of view of the word of god because I didn't express that mm -hmm. to start if you haven't done it from the point of view of the word of God as for instance like the, the the one I just referred to now that love is kind when you are kind you don't hurt people you know for, for instance um um in the early part of our marriage because my husband is very exuberant type and I'm not so so there are sometimes you know he may say some things that will hurt me and I would later explain to him that what you said hurt me. I didn't like it. And then, you know, because he loves me, at that, at that point in time, it doesn't make sense to him why I didn't like it. But just because I have said that I don't like it, I don't like what you said. He said, because you don't like it, I will not say it again. Or I will not say it like that again. And the same thing goes for me. There are some things that he doesn't like that doesn't make sense to me. But just because he doesn't like it, he's communicated it to me, I will take it on board because I love him. I don't want to hurt him. I, will, I, would not, I would not repeat those things again. Now, I think the next thing to do would be to go for counseling. If he is willing to go for counseling. Another thing, very one thing I do always, and I, I'm not apologetic about it, is I pray about everything. Go into prayer. There is nothing God cannot do going to pray I pray for him before you even take it to, to, for counseling because counseling is still man except God intervenes let me just stop there so I don't take too much time thank you ma'am thank you so much brother New York Baleya you were raising up your hand oh uh, yeah, yes I was ma thank thank you ma I, I I was actually going to advise the last sister but um the speaker thank you very much um Pastor Joyce she <laughs> She she mentioned what I wanted to say. My, oh, okay. my point is, somebody is facing that kind of situation. It is unfortunately a form of abuse. And if uh, somebody is actually saying to us, "Well, this is what this is how my husband behaves. This is what they're doing. This is I I really can't take it anymore. They're already asking for help." My 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 advice would be, please go for counselling. Go and speak to somebody your husband respects in a, in in KICC it's pastor Dickmo if you are from another church it will be um somebody else but please it is really really important that we need this in the board two reasons for this one of them is after so many years of, of being together you tend to understand each other and you tend to i know this doesn't sound too cool but it happens and it's um uh, it's not done intentionally. You tend to take each other for granted. There are certain things that your wife will say to you that you think, yeah, maybe that's not right. But somebody else says it, then you take it seriously. You think, no, it must be true. <laughs> In the same way, um, if you go for counseling, speak to the man of God. The man of God speaks to your husband in your presence. It will be sorted. Uh, the, the second reason is... Um, <sighs> 
I don't know how to put this. How one of the things I dread most is okay. My wife is not here, so I can say this. Is <laughs> I will tell her. <laughs> is anybody dragging me before Pastor Ma that Pastor Deepmore saying my my husband shouted at me? You know because the man is my father. Mm. I mean, look at it this way: if a man slaps me twice and says, "Get out of my office!" How dare you shout to to, to your husband to, to your wife like that? I will I will I will never do it again. So I'm not saying this is what Pastor Dick was going to do. It's just an example of respect. When you when you have a man of God in your life, you just need to, I don't mean this literally, drag that person, your husband, before the man of God and let them speak into your life. And they will cancel you based on scripture. So it, it is, it, it is my, my point is, please cancel it. If you're in that situation, get counseling before this goes into really serious cases of abuse where you now i i know before somebody says this before the sister says this it, it must have gone on for a long time the problem is you are subjecting other lives into it in other words i don't know if you have children if you have children your children are being subjected to this particular lifestyle you, if you have sons, your sons are seeing what the man are doing, or what the man is doing, and it is not being corrected. Uh, if you have daughters, <laughs> your daughter is seeing that, oh, this is acceptable. This is how to deal with this kind of abuse. But if it's dealt with, it will be, yeah, it, it will be nipped in the bud. At that generation, it will not be perpetuated to the next generation. So it is important to seek counseling. Thank you Thank so you. much, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, Rani is a, is another experienced married man. His children are almost drowning up in the university. Yeah, thank you. He, he, he spoke about gangsterism the last time. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Sister Kewe. Oh, so this is not the experienced married person, but um, no. So I think I just wanted to. I'd like to just um address this from the single person's viewpoint and um. I I think I find it difficult to think of this man as having respected his wife when they were courting. I mean, if a man, if things are this toxic, I mean, I know things change, but I suspect that this level of disrespect did not start today. So, I mean, all I'm saying is for those of us on this platform who are not married, be careful. Um, look out for this kind of stuff. Um, look for how respectful a man is of you um, when he's toasting you. You know, think of how he treats you. Um, he's not, you know, the man who does not respect you when he's toasting you is not likely to change after he gets married to you. So I think these are things that one should look out for to try to avoid, you know, the kind of thing that we have just heard. Um, and, okay, that scenario is really, really extreme. It looks as if it's gone very, very far. And, um, yes, you know, let's um, trust, pray, um, do the counseling and believe that things will change. The, you know, it, it looks really, really bad. But the only thing that I, I mean, a, a small thing that I would just, you know, kind of like, you know, throw into that mix is to some extent, actually, when I think I, people can be disrespectful, but I think we should also try. Um, I suspect you might have tried to, but um, I try not to allow people to dis to disrespect me. So there is something about you kind of like refusing the disrespect. It just might go a little way to resolving things. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very good one. Yeah, thank you. For, for those of us on this platform, you are planning to get married, you are engaged, intending, please shine your eyes like they say from the part of the world I come, please. Yeah. So men, you cannot even stroke the back of their head like this. Oh, what's the mean? Oh, no, no, no. They begin to shine your eyes. <laughs> you must be free with your spouse. And some ladies too, it's not even just some men. It's just that it's maybe 
um, um, common with men. But I know some ladies too that they're very, very disrespectful of their spouses. So Thank you, ma. Both ways. <laughs> <laughs> so it's both ways. So let's let's just um, be careful. And if there's anyone that is going through that, we're going to pray at the end of this session. I will trust that um, God will touch the heart of such men, such women. And that's the purpose of this um, um, program. It's not because we just want to talk. It's we want to touch lives, want to touch homes, want the Holy Spirit to, to be the person in charge, in control of homes. And that's the reason for this program. So the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Um, mm -hmm. Sister Neely, are you raising up your hand or the one you've raised before? Well, that's a legacy hand. Let me put it down. Okay. <laughs> All thank right. you. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, yeah, Sister Lara Kupoli there says, it takes two to tango. Yes, it takes two to tango. We must respect each other. Spouses, please. And uh, you see, one thing that kills a marriage, really, or a relationship, maybe even just courtship, is when the other person does not respect the other. We need to respect each other. We just have to. If you don't respect that person, you, you, you're making that person feel so little. You're making that first person feel like um, they're they are not important to you. They, they, they're like um, your footmat, if I can just use that word. So please, you're on the platform as well, and you, you are doing this to your spouse. I want to plead with you. I want to beg you, please stop. It, it kills the mind. It breaks the heart, please. I've witnessed it in some relationships and ah, my late daughter witnessed one and she said, ah, my mommy, I can't imagine being in a relationship like this. I would die because it was really bad what we, she, she witnessed. And you know, th this can prevent some people getting uh, going into marriage. I said, if Christ is the rock, he will lead you aright. Because my brother Nee said it. When your children are witnessing things like this, that brings me to the next um, session we'll be having. We'll be talking about how communication impacts the lives of your children. That's the next thing we'll be talking at, at our next session. You know, it, it's, it's very, very, very important how we relate to each other in marriage. Because your children are seeing. People around are seeing as well. You know, when some people, uh, Pastor uh, uh, Joyce has been bragging about her marriage, her husband, Bobo, you know, all those kind of things, things. You can't do that. And even if you try to pretend, people that have been seeing you guys, <laughs> see what has been, uh, uh, we know what's happening, this is a lie. Yeah? No. I beg you, in the name of God, let's change. And sister, I know you're on this platform because I know the person that wrote this one. And... Um, the Lord will heal your marriage. The Lord will touch the heart of your husband. And if there's anything that you do, maybe one way or the other that you are doing that is maybe making him to even be hardened for many years now, at least I think your marriage is about 16 years now, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And if this has been going on for that long, you need counsel, as you have been told. We will talk later. Um, the next one says that... Um, my spouse does not respond to me. He does not acknowledge anything that I say. It's all about his own views. He just wants to hear his views and he wants you to respond to what he's saying. He wants you to acknowledge what he's saying. But when you are saying your own uh, 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 things, he doesn't want to listen to you. He doesn't acknowledge it. He will be talking over what you are saying like shutting you up, but when he's talking, he wants you to listen, he wants you to acknowledge what he's wearing, he wants you to acknowledge that he's doing well at work, or, and when you come back home, oh, today I'm tired, or my boss did this, or this is what I experienced, he won't listen. How do I handle this? Please advise. Okay, ma. Um. Um, the the first thing that is coming to that came to my mind is um how were you communicating with, with somebody had mentioned I think it was um sister Cohen um how were you communicating before marriage 
you know, did you see these things before marriage? That, that's the first thing that flagged in my mind. Um, because when, whatever red flags you see before marriage, please make sure you nip it in the bud. Because um, there's an adage that, say, that there's a Yoruba adage that says, what you will not take when you are rich is from when you are poor. We are, we are not poor in Jesus' name, but you know what I mean? It's when the person is poor that you will reject it, that you say, no, I'm not taking this. So, you know, for instance, um, it, it's commonplace that um, compliments would usually flow a lot from the man to the woman. In fact, we usually try to encourage the woman to make sure that they compliment their husband. Because usually, because the man is the one who is, so to say, hunting for the for, for the for the wife, he will usually be the one to flow with with compliments. So I'm thinking in my mind's eye, did he compliment you a lot when um you were cutting? How was how was your communication style? Did he shut you down when you were cutting? Um, how did you handle it then? Okay, let's pack that aside because that's gone past now. Uh, we are now where we are. I believe one thing, if you've not done it, but I think you may have done it, is to sit down and have a chat with him. Like, I, I need to have a serious conversation with you, my husband. This and this are what I've noticed. And you need to be, you need to explain to him the impact is having on your emotions on how you will respond to him, on how you will respect him. Because I tell you, when people hurt our feelings, it's difficult to respect them. When we see that that person is not, um, is not making any effort to try to consider what we also you know, feel or what our opinions are about issues on ground, it's just natural that we tend not to want to respect such people. So basically, have a sit down. Um, before, before that, make sure you pray. Pray very hard. Seek God's faith, face for wisdom. How do I talk to my husband on this? How will I get him to listen and hear me? It's one thing for the words to go out. It's another thing for him to hear. You know, when it comes to, to human beings, we of ourselves, we can't do anything. It's God who created him. It's God who will make him hear you. It's God who will make him listen to you. Go and meet that God. The God who created him. Go and meet him. Pray. They have a sit down with him. For me, I would have written down what I want to say so that I don't get sidetracked. So that when, when, the, when the conversation wants to go into maybe him talking over what I'm saying, I will not, I will not be sidetracked. I will have what I want to talk about. I will have it written down, bullet pointed. And then I would say, you know what, this is what I'm talking about. You are talking over me again. Can I finish what I'm saying, please? And you talk to him respectfully. So there would not be, oh, you are disrespecting me. That's why I'm shutting you down. And you also need to take a light on yourself and ask yourself very hard questions. Why is he doing this to me? I'm not saying it's your fault. But like we've, somebody has said earlier, it takes two to tango. We should never always put the blame. that oh, The blame is never mine. It's always the other person. Let's also look at ourselves and see what we could possibly change to make things better, easier. Is it that he's reacting to something? I'm not saying that what, the, what he's doing is right. What he's doing is definitely not right. But is it possible that he's reacting to some perceived, um, you know, uh, action that is coming from you that you need to sit down and talk together okay this perceived action that you are seeing is not actually so this is what i mean when i say this this is what okay you don't maybe my tone raises a little i will try and bring down my tone but however it's not right for you to talk over me as well and then if you love me you want to care about what happened to me during the day you want to compliment me when i dress up when i dress up i dress up for no other person I dress up for God and I dress up for my husband. There, there was a day I dressed up. My husband looked at me. I was about to go out of the room. And he said, I don't like your trousers. And that trouser, eh, I, had, I, I had given it TLC, serious TLC. And he told me, I don't like your trousers. I don't like the trousers you are wearing. I said, what's wrong with it? He said, I just don't like it. He later told me why he didn't like it, you know. And I, I took it off. 
but reluctantly, but I took it off because my, my where I not, my, my position and where I stand is I dress for God and I dress for my husband. My husband doesn't like what I'm wearing. Why am I wearing it? Who am I dressing for? I'm dressing for him. Because when I dress, I expect him to compliment me. Babes, you look nice. And I compliment him. Bobo, you are one in town. We don't hide compliments from each other. I, I, I'm toasting him as he's coming out of the room. And he's toasting me too as I'm coming out of the room. I, so that if I go outside and nobody toasts me, I'm fine. You know, so yeah, let me just stop there because I would like other people too to contribute. I could go on and on. I hope we have that. And if that doesn't resolve it, please go for counseling. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you very much. Yeah, I hope that answers um, the questions. Yeah, and if it doesn't, maybe counsel or somebody the person respects. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we have two questions more, but Sister Timmy, make it a quick one. Yes, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Ma. I quickly just want to add that sometimes you can look inward. If the marriage is more than 10 years, and you are now facing this issue. It's maybe, maybe this thing we call it see finish, right? Maybe at the beginning of the marriage, everything your husband tells you, they are pam pam, they are right, and you don't have any reason to argue. But nowadays, when he raised something, then arguments come because you think you've known him all, you've seen it all, and you you start querying everything is you know telling you, and you are seeing that no, this thing is wrong. Maybe that is why. And this is why you should check. Sometimes it's happened when the marriage is going to the next level. So it's for you to just look inward and see how you can start all over again. The fact that he was not doing it when before you got married does not mean he wouldn't do it. Then check his friends as well. You know, influence. Check people he's mixing with now. Maybe he's seeing something that he's trying to make sure he's bringing in. The third one is culture right? We've seen some people that they believe so much in their family culture that women has nothing to say. Women has no brain. Check inward. You will find the reason why he has just changed and he doesn't want to listen to you or he doesn't want to compliment. And mommy has said is go for counseling if you have tick all the boxes and things are still happening like that. Just go for counseling and they will help you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, ma. Look inwards. Look inwards. Okay. Thank you. So um, somebody said, what can I do? My husband is so temperamental, always feels he's right and don't listen to another opinion. Hmm. Yeah. Over to you, Ma. <laughs> yes, Ma. Okay. So th this, to, to, be, to be honest, is similar to the, what we've been talking about. Yeah, what we've just, you know, what we've just talked about. Mm -hmm. Um, there, there, there'll be there are a lot of factors that can contribute to things like this. Number one is the personality type. Number two is like um our our dear sister had mentioned, sister Timmy, as had mentioned earlier, you know, um, it could be it could be their family background. You know what? What is their opinion about women? Um, and all of all all of these these factors are factors we need to consider before we get married. I'm 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 a very I'm very big on be very careful before you get married. Check all of these things. There is no human being that is perfect. We are not going to marry a perfect person. However, before you take on someone that you want to marry that person, make sure that that person's imperfections is what God has given you the grace to bear. Because when the imperfections begin to show, um, these are what would put pressure on the marriage. So for the, this person's um, temperament is, you know, he doesn't listen. Did he listen to you before? And he's now not listening to you. Th those are questions that are coming to my mind. Did it just start happening? And like our sister had said earlier, if it didn't happen before and it's now happening now, perhaps check his friends. What are the, begin to look, ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. What was actually causing this thing? You know, some of these things, Holy Spirit, I was telling someone, I said, Holy Spirit is all over for He tells you, he will tell you exactly what is going on. I promise you. You know, some things happen. I don't know what's going on. I just asked Holy Spirit, come, he will just tell me. You know, ask him. 
what exactly is going on with my husband? Maybe he didn't used to do it before and he's not doing it now, but he used to do it before. You thought you could handle it and now he's, now he's getting out of hand, okay? Then you need to sit him down as well. Same principle is always good. Start the, the discussion between both of you first. If you now don't get an answer, then involve, involve a third party, which is where counseling comes in. However, do pray first, sit down and have a chat with him. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you where what is going on. Then ask for wisdom. It's wisdom you will use to, to approach those areas that you think is actually affecting the way he's speaking to you and he doesn't listen to anybody. Maybe he thinks you two, you are Miss, Mrs. Know-all and you want to override. You know, sometimes, I'm not saying it's all of the times, sometimes men tend to want to enforce their... Um, their rights, their rights in the home. When they sense, when they when they perceive, you see, I'm trying to choose my words. When they perceive that they think that their wife is trying to usurp their position in the home, then they think, you know, what is that? What is all that nonsense? I'm not going to, you know, allow that nonsense, you know. And and that ego comes out uh, to to want to press that person down. And obviously, it comes down comes out in different forms, different ways. You know, uh, it expresses itself in different ways, forms and formats. So basically, check yourself as well. What is there a way I'm talking to him that's not quite coming across quite rightly? We, women, we need. You see, let me. Words, communication is 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 very big. The words, words is the first form of communication. You know, communication is a very very big topic. What is the first form of communication? Then body language, and there are so many other things. However, when it comes to words, when we are when we are talking to someone, especially someone, excuse me, who is in authority over us, whether we like it or not, our husband is our leader. You know, there's a way to talk to your leader. Yes, we see each other finish, we know each other finish, but there's still a way to talk to your leader. There's a way to when you talk to him in an honorable way. I promise you, he is not a wild cat. He, he will honor you back. I have seen it. It works. Speak to him honorably. Communicate to him honorably. My husband. Give him respect. The way he sees that, uh, he will be coming down now. You know, respect him. You, uh, I tell you, uh, the, the, uh, what, the, the sort of respect I give my husband now, I promise you, it's not, I didn't start it day one. But obviously, as you go on, as God teaches, as God taught me, and I begin, began to imbibe the wisdom of God, I saw that, ah, no, I need to give this man more respect. And I began to give him more respect. As I gave him more respect, ah, I, I you know, my mama Oko is on this platform. That's a uh, reverend. She's on this. She, she can tell you the, 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 the honor and the respect my husband gives me. To, to be honest, sometimes I just look and say, oh, ah, girl. You know, but it, it didn't just start there. I, I, I started respecting, I gave him his respect as the head of the home, as my husband. I gave him. Of the palace. So let me stop there. Yeah, like I said, I could go on and on. Let me stop, man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Wow, wow, wow. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much for that contribution. Yes. So um, our time is fast spent. I think we have just about... Um, 15 minutes left now we still have to pray but quickly so that this person will not think we didn't address i really still don't understand what the person is saying he says good evening ma what if it seems as though you don't have much to talk about in marriage because of social media influence that bit i don't really understand i don't know if anybody understands that and then we can respond to her i i think i might Maybe. have an idea what that person is trying to okay, say okay sir and the reason for that is we had it, and um, my my lovely well my 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 lovely wife dealt with it very very brutally. So um, I think what has happened is sometimes you 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 watch movies and you're saying to yourself, is this what people do? You find husband and wife in bed, and uh, both of them are on their phones. Hmm. Um, sometimes. You will have oh, okay. at the table uh, eating and all of them are on their phones. Um, it, it, is, it is the time we live in. It is almost acceptable. It is acceptable to an extent, but it's also a killer of intimacy. Oh. So what you do is you put in rooms. For instance, 
um my wife is all, very very big on um uh um when you when we're at the table no phones we we went as a family once uh the, the, i've got two children and we were at nando's and i i noticed that when we sat down or waiting for our food we were the only people there who were around the table with no phones out and we all had our phones so we had no choice we were chatting i just noticed that everybody around us were on their phones but we had this this is a family thing However, it also affects um, um, uh, couples. So you, it, 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 I know it's difficult. Um, and, and the reason for this is, even though my wife is the one who made the rules, she's the one that breaks it most of the time. And the reason, <laughs> and, and the reason for that is understandable. She runs a business. And uh, as a result, sometimes she needs to get phone calls that are business related. Um, we we, we still, still use it to tease her and say, "Ah, oh, no, you're breaking your own rules." And she tries to explain. We understand, but we still hold it against her. But <laughs> in a way, my my point is a very a very simple one. Uh, you need to make rules. You need to say to yourself, "Okay, we're watching TV now. No phone. No phones. We're eating now. No phones. Or oh, it's uh, ten o'clock now. No phones. Or eight o'clock now. No phones." For instance, uh, after I think it's after eight. Children are not allowed to take the phones upstairs to their bedrooms. It has to be downstairs. Um, those are phone rules that don't affect um, a couple. But then as a couple, husband and wife, you would need to make rules for yourselves and say uh, phones should be left downstairs charging. We're not taking it to the bedroom. Or oh, when once we're in bed now, please don't pick up your phone or don't don't be looking at social media. So there's a difference between your phone ringing and you're picking it up to talk to somebody. Usually those are fine at times. It is the social media browsing that you really need to be careful of. So if I if I got the the question right, that is what I, I think. think so. that... I think so. You've done justice to this. I think so. I never even thought in that line at all. Thank you so, so much. I've even learned from that as well. And your children, are they not in the university now? Yes, Toluani is in uni. And you um, said no phones after eight o'clock. Oh it. no no no! So that that was before he went to university. Oh, now, okay. now now when he comes when when he comes home, he he has his own rules. But um, my my daughter who is still in um sixth form, uh, she still has she's still under that those rules. I'm afraid. Okay. Uh, until well um well done. Until she leaves home or she's she's married off, you'll have to follow that rules. <laughs> well done, well done, yeah. Because in this time and age, people think oh, such things cannot work anymore. So such, such things don't happen anymore. I always say to people, what you want to see in your life, in the life of your children, introduce it. Introduce it at an early age. I I don't believe that because the society has changed. There is no more discipline. And children can now do whatever they like. Yeah, huh? yeah, but but the, 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 I I must say that the phone one is a really really difficult one, and the reason for that is our our lives already revolve around it. Yeah. Um. For instance, if you take a phone off a child, especially a secondary school child, as punishment, I used to do this years ago. I would take the phone off them physically, but then when they need you to pick them up because of an emergency. <laughs> Um, then there's social media. They still also need to get in, keep in touch with their friends at the appropriate time. Mm -hmm. Then I found out that sometimes they discuss on social media homework, things that have to do with yeah. um, with work. So their lives already revolve around it. So it's actually difficult to control. I think it's the excess that you want to really. Yeah, but really the eight o'clock thing. Yeah, if you you were able to do that, that was because many children would not sleep on time. Then they, they wake up very late and they are late for school as well. So I, 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 I deal with such things even with some of my patients as well because the children are with their phones till about 2 a.m. Oh, yes. yeah, that, that yes. is bad. So for you to be able to do that and you are still doing that. Yeah. Uh, so, so applause. Yeah. yeah, the older they get, the, mm -hmm. the more the the, the 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 more time you give them to take the the, the, the to, to take the phones up to their rooms mm -hmm. but um to be honest it it is a really
in the Gulf one. Oh, Gulf War. Yeah, <laughs> but well done. At least, at least you achieved it and you you won. <laughs> no, we're still we're still trying. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. All right, that brings us to the uh, end of question and answer. I hope we've had a good time. Does anybody have anything they want to say? Because we are going into prayers now, so we can round up, please. Sorry, I have my hand up. I'm just one. I mean, this um discussion, obviously, we've moved to children, but it focused on it started with the husband and wife and um, their communication being hampered because of social media. Yes, social media is quite addictive, and you know it does take up a lot of our time. But I think that um for a husband and wife, there is also that thing about having common interests that you talk about. Um some don't you know as in husband and wife just don't have anything to talk about you know that's kind of like they do together and i think those kind of things um help communication so um i would just encourage that you know if that actually you do kind of like you know cultivate common interest so that you know husband and wife can talk about those things and people are not just focused on looking at their phones um surfing social media all the time thank you yeah thank you well noted and i hope um people on the platform have had that and um take it on board thank you everyone thank you for your time saturday is a very very busy day for so many people but you have um taken your time to join us and i'm sure you have not regretted joining it's been a wonderful session a lot of eye opener opening um points that's been uh, brought up and um, we are grateful to Pastor uh, Mrs. Joyce Da Costa and we want you to pray Ma for married couples who are going through um, um, some turbulent times in their marriage some because of communication issues and um, if there's anyone in on the platform as well that they are not enjoying their marriage at all because of uh, poor communication between the couple that the Holy Spirit will begin to intervene, that they will remember today's session and they will give God the glory. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. And as the Spirit leads you. Amen. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father and our God, the one who made the heavens, the one who made the earth, the one who created the whole universe, but still came and became man that we might find a way out of the mess that we created for ourselves. Today, we want to thank you once again for this opportunity of being able to rub minds with each other and being able to look at your word and to consider what you've said versus what is happening in our lives and in our marriages. Father, we are so grateful to you. Thank you very much in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord and our God, we lift up every marriage represented here and every heart that desires to marry. Father, we lift everyone up unto you. We pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. that what you intend for every marriage will be that which will be experienced in Jesus' name. Yeah. Lord, the Bible says when you created everything in the beginning, mm -hmm. the Bible says it was good. Mm. Good. The ma marriage was good. Mm. Everything was good. Mm. But then sin came into the world. Mm. However, you still made the way. Because you are God, you are love. The Bible says God is love. You are love. You can't leave us on our own. Yes, this so. king of heaven, we pray that your love will permeate each and every marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Because we know that love breaks down barriers. Love brings solutions. We mm. pray that your love will we permeate and seep and, and overflow in each and every relationship in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we pray for relationships that have issues at this time, especially people that raised questions regarding how to resolve these issues. We pray in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus sir, that you will have your way concerning these issues in Jesus' name. We call those issues to be destroyed. Amen. Every evil that is, that is giving power even to this issue, we command it to be destroyed. 
destroyed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says when Jesus came that he he triumphed over evil. He made an open show of them. He he he, he, he didn't do it in the in the corner. He did it openly. Yes. That's that we pray that Lord you 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 will disgrace the enemy concerning these issues in these marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Disgrace the enemy. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Bring peace to these homes. Ah, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Bring the manifestation of your love. Amen. Bring the manifestation of your joy. Amen. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We take authority over Satan. Mm. You will not have your way in these homes. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ask for solutions mm. in the mighty name of Jesus. All ye gates be lifted up. Amen. Ye everlasting doors. Amen. And let the King of glory come riding triumphantly in. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Bring gain peace with him. Amen. Bring him joy with him. Amen. Bring him his love with him. Amen. Bring him solutions to this communication Amen. issues. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Bring him solutions to all temperamental issues. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Allow him love and respect to flow from each other. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord, in the mighty Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you, we Lord. Praise. We pray, Lord, that people will remember this session and remember it for good. And Lord, yeah. that the Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes, he will come to remind us of God's word. Mm -hmm. We pray that the Holy Spirit will trigger a remembrance yeah. in the hearts of everyone concerning this yeah. session. And that which he wants us to use in our, in our lives and in our homes, in yeah. the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Abba Father, we give you praise. Because more than we have asked of you, you always do for us. Yes, Lord. Let your name be glorified. Amen. Let your wisdom reign. Oh God. Amen. Provide avenues of solution to these people, Lord, I pray. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Their marriages Amen. will not break down. Amen. Where abuse is the case, we, we pray in the name of Jesus. That Amen. You in the name of the and the abuse stops Amen. and the release of for your daughter Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank in you, Lord. Jesus, in name we have prayed. I pray Amen. for everybody on the on this platform. I plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. In every marriage upon every home in the name of Jesus. Amen. The enemy will not have his way in any home, in any marriage, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I Amen. Thank you for Reverend Olani Kabajomo. I thank you for her life. I thank you for everything she stands for. Father, I pray and I lift her up at this particular point in time. We pray in the name of Jesus that your hand over her life will never be removed. Amen. 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 Jesus, that you will continually Amen. be her sustenance, you will continually Amen. be her grace, you will continually Amen. be her pain, you will continually Amen. be a wrap around around her in Amen. the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Do for her all for what only you can do oh, God, just... in the mighty name of the Lord Amen. Jesus. Amen. Thank you for everyone that is supporting her. Amen. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your hand will never be removed from their lives as well. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for animate, oh God, and for every Everything that animate stands for. Look, Father, let the vision be enlarged. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And rich men, rich women, rich Amen. boys, rich Amen. girls through this platform. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let only your name be praised. Amen. Let your name be glorified. Amen. We thank you, King of Heaven. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen and amen so shall it be there shall be manifestations amen. in the mighty name of jesus thank you so much ma you, god sir. bless you richly ma ah the anointing upon your life will continue to be fresh yeah. and the, the greater grace for you in the name of jesus thank you so much we, are, we have been so so blessed hallelujah thank you ma and we've got some comments there which i will read very soon sister kewe over to you Okay. Um, so good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for attending today's session. Um, I had asked for anybody who is not on our mailing list to send me your email address so that I can keep you updated on future events and developments. I haven't got anything, um, but I have actually posted our email address in the chat. It's animatearcade at email at gmail.com. So it's there. Um 
you know, we'll soon finish. So um, you can send your email address to that email and then um, I shall include you on the mailing list. So um, we normally hold these events on the last Saturday of the month. There is not going to be an event in May just because of other commitments. So there will not be an event in May. So the next event is on the 29th of June. And it is on commun it's kind of like continuing the communication in marriage theme. But in this case, it's communication between parents um, and children and the effect that those communication have on children. So again, um, it's communication in marriage between parents and children and the effects of those communications on children. Um, I'm sure that you all have people who this kind of um, discussion would benefit. We shall send out details. Please forward the invitations and you, you yourself plan to be there. Thank you once again for coming today. And please remember to send your email address to nmsarcade.gmail.com so we can keep you updated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the comments. It's a great session. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. The topic is helpful. Very interesting session, especially the biblical aspect. Thank you to all the speakers and our wonderful hosts. A big thank you to Pastor Mrs. Joyce for the impactful exposition of Genesis 3 with regards to communication in marriage. Powerful session. Thank you, Pastor and Sister Inka and all the organizers. My name is Ola Inka, please. I'm not Inka. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Ola Inka, for a great program. And thank you for Pastor Joyce for an insightful presentation. Thank you, everyone, for your communication. Um, Brother Njoku, thank you, Brother Ike. He has sent, Sister Kewe, Brother Ike has sent his email address, please. Please take note of that. So thank you everybody once again. Thank you for this great and insightful presentation. Without you guys, this program will be meaningless. So thank you for coming and we trust you will keep coming. But beyond that, please share, share. Each time we send our invite, please share so that many more people can be blessed. Thank you. I want to hand over to Pastor Away, please. Okay. Benediction, please. Thank you so much, Ma, for today. Um, I've been really, really blessed. Thank really, you. really, really blessed. So let's just all pray. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We exalt you. We magnify your holy name. We thank you because of who you are. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because today, Lord, we have learned about the communication in marriage. We, Lord, pray today that you will strengthen the bond of marriages in the name of Jesus, the physical bond, the spiritual bond, spiritual intimacy in our marriages. I pray today, Lord, that Father, husband and wife would have intimacy with you first. Like, oh Lord, Pastor Joyce has mentioned, that is a three-way cord and also intimacy with one another. I pray, Lord, that, Lord, any behavior that may be committing, oh God, or preventing us from entering into a deeper relationship, Lord, with you and with one another, we come against it mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that the trust, oh God, will return in homes. We pray that, Lord, everything will be possible with you. Heal, Lord, every heart. Heal, Lord, every mind. Heal past earth in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, today that, Lord God, we would understand that marriage, oh God, is unto honor. That, Father, it is a covenant that you have made. Lord, I pray today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, you would help, oh Lord, anyone that may be here, that even have questions in their hearts but may not be able to speak out lord you know the heart of every man i pray today lord in the name of jesus that wherever they may be hurting that the holy spirit would help and to heal mm -hmm. in the name of jesus mm -hmm. thank you lord god we give you praise and glory mm -hmm. thank you lord for restoring homes oh god according to your pattern mm -hmm. thank you lord jesus for helping us oh lord in our communication filling it with courtesy and kindness 
in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, that even as we return to our homes, oh God, every word that has been shared here today will be, Lord, for your glory. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, Lord, we have prayed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Back to you, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for all those comments. Thank you, pastors and all. I was really blessed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you too. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for joining us. And um, once um, um, the program ends, we are going to send you the YouTube link and um, you can send it to those whom you think will benefit from this. So we'll send you the YouTube link and um, you can listen to it again yourself or uh, people can visit the our YouTube uh, page to be blessed. Thank you once again. So we all thank um, Pastor Joyce once again and all the contributors. Thank you so much. We've learned so many new things today. And um, I, as a person, even though uh, I'm a widow, but I've learned so many things that I can also use to help others. So all that you have learned here today, please take it on board and share with others, help others. That's the essence. God bless you richly. Have a wonderful service tomorrow and have a great week ahead. I love you all. Mwah. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. Uh, miss, stop um, recording now. Thank you, Auntie. Thank you very much, Safola. Thank you for always being there. We appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah.